Welcome to this tutorial on variational autoencoders. In this session, we will explore how variational autoencoders work, their mathematical foundations, and their applications in deep learning. Variational autoencoders, or VE, are a class of generative models that combine deep learning with probabilistic modeling. Unlike traditional autoencoders, which compress data into a fixed encoding, variational autoencoders introduce a probabilistic latent space. This allows them to not only reconstruct data, but also generate entirely new data points that resemble the training data. A variational autoencoder consists of three key components. Encoder maps the input data into a probability distribution in a lower dimensional latent space, latent space representation, instead of a fixed encoding. The encoder outputs a distribution over the latent variables. Decoder reconstructs data by sampling from the latent space and mapping it back to the original space. Let's understand variational autoencoders mathematically. We will start with some notation. Given a data set, each example is represented by x. The generative process assumes that z is sampled from a prior distribution p of z, typically a Gaussian distribution. The observed data x is then generated through a transformation of z, which corresponds to a likelihood model p of x given z. The transformation is parameterized by a neural network with trainable parameters theta. Thus, the marginal likelihood of x can be given by the following equation. p of x is equal to the integral over all possible values of z of the product of the likelihood model and the prior model. The traditional way to train a probability model from a training set is maximum likelihood estimation. Given a data set and a parameterized probability distribution, the logarithm likelihood function quantifies the log probability of observing the given data under specific model parameters. Maximizing this function can be accomplished by gradient ascent, where the computation of the gradient of is the key. However, the gradient of the log probability involves a posterior distribution p of z given x, which is intractable. This makes direct optimization difficult. Motivated by this, Variational autoencoders adopt variational inference to approximate the intractable posterior inference. To approximate the posterior distribution of z given x, variational autoencoders introduce a variational distribution q of z given x, parameterized by another trainable neural network with parameters phi. The objective is to minimize the callback Leibler divergence between the true posterior distribution, which is p of z given x, and the variational distribution, which is q of z given x. Since computing the true posterior distribution directly is intractable, we instead maximize the evidence lower bound. The evidence lower bound provides a lower bound on the logarithm of the marginal likelihood of observed data, which is tractable. We can further understand the evidence lower bound, which is the loss function of variational autoencoders. A variational autoencoder seeks to optimize parameters theta and phi to maximize the evidence lower bound. The evidence lower bound consists of two terms, a reconstruction loss that ensures the decoded output is similar to the input, and a KL divergence term that regularizes the latent space by ensuring the variational distribution is close to a prior distribution, typically a standard normal distribution, in order to regularizing the latent space to prevent overfitting. The core components of a variational autoencoder are the encoder and decoder, which work together to map data into a structured latent space and reconstruct it back to the original space. The encoder, which serves as an inference model, takes an input x and maps it to a latent distribution instead of a fixed vector. It outputs two parameters, the mean mu and the variance sigma squared, defining a Gaussian distribution in the latent space. Instead of directly passing mu and sigma squared to the decoder, the variational autoencoder samples a latent vector z using the reparameterization trick, which is sampling from a Gaussian distribution parameterized by the mu and the sigma squared. On the other hand, the decoder, which serves as a generation model, reconstructs x from the latent variable z. We illustrate the variational autoencoder in the figure on the left. A variational autoencoder learns stochastic mappings between an observed space and a latent z space. The generative model learns a joint distribution of x and z that is often factorized as a prior distribution over latent space and a stochastic decoder. The stochastic encoder q of z given x, also called inference model, approximates the true but 
intractable posterior distribution of the generative model, which is P of Z given X. The total loss for variational autoencoders consists of reconstruction loss, which is the mean squared error, and the KL divergence loss, which is a KL divergence between two Gaussian distribution. This exactly has a closed form. For practice, we can add a weight hyperparameter beta into the loss to control the trade-off between the two terms. This balance determines the quality of generated samples and the structure of the latent space. Variational autoencoders have found extensive applications across diverse domains, including image generation, anomaly detection, representation learning, and dimensionality reduction. In the following discussion, we will explore each of these applications in detail. Unlike generative adversarial nets, which can suffer from mode collapse, variational autoencoders offer a more probabilistic and structured approach to generating diverse images. Recent advancements have significantly improved their performance, making them competitive with generative adversarial nets. For example, VQVAE learns a discrete latent representation by incorporating ideas from vector quantization and pairs these representations with an autoregressive prior. The model can generate high quality images. Additionally, hierarchical and very deep architectures have been designed for variational autoencoders to enhance their performance in image generation. Variational autoencoders are commonly used for unsupervised anomaly detection, particularly in medical imaging and industrial monitoring. There are two primary methods that can use a trained variational autoencoder for this purpose. Method A, we can use reconstruction probability. That is, if an input is poorly reconstructed, it is flagged as an anomaly. Method B uses the Euclidean norm of the latent code. That is, if the code norm is too large, the sample is flagged as an anomaly. Figure A presents an example of utilizing reconstruction probability for anomaly detection in chest radiographs. Figure B illustrates the Euclidean norms of latent codes for both a normal and an abnormal example. Variational autoencoders can learn disentangled representations, meaning different latent variables capture distinct features of the data. This makes variational autoencoders useful for learning interpretable representations. For example, Beta VAE introduces a disentanglement factor to separate independent factors of variation, while contrastive variational autoencoder improves feature separation by integrating contrastive learning. The figure on the left illustrates an example of latent traversals obtained from Beta VAE trained on 3D chair dataset. The traversals of the latent dimensions produce smooth changes in the output samples. Each traversal appears to generate changes isolated in one or a few qualitative features that we might identify intuitively, such as viewing angle, size, and chair leg and back styles. The figure on the right presents a similar example using contrastive VE trained on celebrity images. Here, the model has learned two latent factors specifically related to glasses. We see that the two latent factors concern attributes of the glasses. Latent variable 1 appears to control the direction of the glasses, while latent variable 2 influences their transparency or presence, demonstrating the model's ability to disentangle meaningful attributes in the data. Another important application of variational autoencoders is dimensionality reduction. Unlike PCA, which assumes linear mappings, variational autoencoders learn nonlinear manifolds that better capture complex data structures. This has several key benefits. First, latent space compression helps reduce data dimensionality, making storage more efficient. Second, working in a low-dimensional space speeds up both training and inference, improving computational efficiency. And finally, variational autoencoders help preserve essential features while filtering out noise, ensuring that we retain meaningful information from the data. For example, stable diffusion, a text-to-image diffusion generation framework, uses a variational autoencoder to compress high-resolution images before applying diffusion steps, reducing computational cost. Before we conclude, let's briefly summarize what we've covered and highlight the key takeaways from this presentation. Variational autoencoders are powerful generative models that learn probability distributions of data. They also learn latent representations of data in a probabilistic manner. The encoder maps inputs to a latent space, while the decoder reconstructs the original data from these latent variables. Unlike traditional autoencoders, variational autoencoders introduce a probabilistic approach, allowing smooth interpolation in the latent space and better generalization.
The training is to maximize the evidence lower bound with variational inference. Variational autoencoders have found applications in various domains. They are widely used in image synthesis with several advancements like deep architecture design and discrete latent space. Besides, they can be used for anomaly detection where they can learn normal data distributions and identify outliers. Additionally, variational autoencoders are valuable for disentangled representation learning and dimension reduction, making them useful for unsupervised learning and data compression tasks. Thank you for your attention. See you in the next topic.